the back, everything's cool. Good. Uh, my name is Shane. I, uh, I develop at NineScenes.com. Um, I blog at ShaneSanderson.com, as you can read, uh, and I tweet, and I get emails. So if you guys ever want to contact me, that's uh, the best way to do it. I'm going to talk today about how to uh, edit, modify, uh, adjust your WordPress themes or annual plugins. Um, it, this is going to be a very rudimentary um, entry level kind of how to edit PHP and CSS. It's not going to be a completely overhaul your blog and, and dig deep into the core uh, of the code. It's going to be very rudimentary, so if you're an advanced level, you may not uh, enjoy this. You may have enjoyed it anyway, so. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, again, I'm ashamed. So what I've done, I've done a uh, just a default uh, WordPress installation, um, and I've put a couple of themes up. So we're going to kind of dig through, look at the themes, see how things are set up, uh, look at a little bit of code, and uh, have some questions, and uh, maybe we'll all have a good time. I don't know. Or you may leave. I don't know. So uh, anyway, here's my site. It's just a test site. I've got a. It's a little disturbing. <laughs> so here's my site. Um, first of all, who all is using uh, a WordPress.org uh, setup? Okay, and then WordPress.com. Can I help you guys? Uh, <laughs> but uh, okay, and who is? Uh, Who's looked at PHP files? Um, who's scared of PHP files? Okay. Who's looked at CSS files? And who's scared of CSS files? Okay. Not so much. Uh, so CSS is a little more uh, not as scary, I guess. So we're going to look at both. But anyway, to get into it, here's our theme. Um, it's, it's a very simple theme. I don't have a lot going on.
this is a great way to edit your theme if you don't want to edit on a live server. Uh, you can see what you're going to be doing here before it actually makes a vibe and you don't uh, make the blow yourself to your site. Look at the so, that's one piece of it. Um, I have a question. Yes. So, when you save that, it's not automatic. You're not saving it on your server itself. You have to physically upload that. Right. What I just did is more of. Uh, like if I here, if I click save on that's this, basically just a copy of the CSS. Right. Copy. It's gonna it's gonna save the copy. Are you gonna have this? I don't I don't have slides, right? But I will have. Uh, I will have these uh, resources available on my website that you can go take a look at. Um, I, I was going to do a slideshow, but it's hard to do slides when you're trying to, to show code. Um, anyway, and also I do encourage you, if you have a question while I'm doing this, go ahead and ask. Uh, I mean, there will be questions afterwards, but if you want to ask something in the middle, it's completely fine. Yes, ma'am? How does this compare to Firebug? Uh, it's, it's very similar. Uh, Firebug, if you have Firebug, it's going to show you the same attributes, same stuff. Uh, so Firebug's cool. I just prefer to use this. This is how I have um, and a little background, I guess I got that myself. Um, my name's Shane. Um, so I, I didn't go to school to learn how to do this. Uh, I actually went to the Art Institute to uh, learn how to do computer animation. I was going to make the next big Toy Story movie, and uh, no, it just didn't work. So anyway, I went and bought uh, this great big book, like this thick, uh, weighs like 80 pounds. I was going to bring it with me, but it was going to put my luggage over weight limits, so I didn't want to do that. Uh, it was called the HTML Bible, and. Uh, that's where I started. I uh, started looking at that, figuring out code, and looking at source code on pages to see how things worked and, and, and how it all worked out. Um, and I, I taught myself everything that I know, uh, along with a lot of help from Google. So, not that all of you are going to be developers, maybe you don't want to be developers, but basically what I'm trying to get across is if you want to make small changes, um, not something huge, you don't always have to hire a developer to do these things. Um, you can teach yourself anything you want. Uh, if you want to do a bad So, was there a hand somewhere? No. Okay. So now that we can all see this, um, let's look at, uh, well, again, real quick, we'll do another little thing on, like, say, for example, you've got a widget, okay? You've got a widget over here. We're going to highlight the guy, and we're going to take a look, and that's going to be, uh, we see the dot block. There's a whole lot of stuff listed here. There's a div, there's a text three, there's a text widget. We're going to look at just the dot block because this other stuff is kind of just general information that's going to be throughout the theme. So if I go to my style sheet and I look at dot block, again, I'm going to find that area in the, go, in the style sheet. I've got a background color, I've got a border, and it's got some padding. So I can always, uh, again, I can come over here and, for example, if I want to uh, say I want to change the I want to change the border color and make it black. And so now I'm going to apply the border on it. Wherever my cursor went. And again, no big deal to change this stuff. It, since CSS doesn't seem to be as scary to you guys as you said PHP was, uh, let's go look at smiles uh, that make up the theme. Okay, so this theme is called Coffee Break. And Who's familiar with that? Have, have you ever went in and looked at the theme files uh, at all, or you just kind of put it in and, and use it the way that it is? Look at a little bit, okay. So basically it's made up, every theme's made up of this, they're all similar files, a lot of them are, are different, but you've got your header, you've got your index, you've got your player, uh, functions, and my phone's ringing. My mom calls in the middle of my presentation. <laughs> So uh, anyway, <laughs> let's look at the header for a minute. Okay, so we're gonna open this up, and, and again, when you when you do this, a lot of people. Uh, long story with my text mate. I did finally get my license, but uh, it was a great big yes. So the the header. This is where everything starts in, in your team. This is where all your basic calls are to your JS, to your JavaScript files, uh, to style sheets, and things of that nature. But when we look at this, like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people that I do work for get scared by this and they don't know what to do with this and they immediately exit out and they run the other direction. 
but it's really not that big of a deal if you, if you look at it and uh, just see how it's laid out. And when I turn my head, that doesn't work, so. Anyway, uh, when we start up here, we've got, uh, this one's a little bit different than most, but, uh, did I open it? Yeah. So, let's start with, uh, say we want to look at the site, for example, where did it go? Let's say we want to do something with the, where the logo is at, right? Or say the navigation bar. We don't like, uh, maybe we don't want the navigation bar there at all, or maybe we want to move it. So if we look at the file, we're going to see how this is all laid out. And you're going to see in the header, you've got this first call right here um, is going to call the logo. You see where it says image class logo, source equals, and the source equals, that can be uh, different based on the themes that you have. This one is a Woo theme, and they give you an option inside the theme uh, functions or, or options to upload your own logo. So if you wanted to not use that, we could replace the source, which is this whole little piece of code right here. And we could trade that out for our own image source if we wanted to pull an image from somewhere else. Um, since this already has it built in, it's not that big of a deal. You'd probably use it the way that it is. But we're looking at the navigation. So if we come a little further down, we have a div ID, and it says nav, uh, which makes sense. That's what it's going to be. Inside that, you have a UL and an LI, um, which is just a listed item of. And it tells us that there's going to be a, a button that says home, which we see right here. And that's the button you're going to see on the uh, on the site that says home. That's kind of hard coded in. It's always going to be there. The rest of the stuff that you're going to see here is actually code that pulls in the rest of the pages. If we look here, it says the PHP W list categories. That's going to list out the categories that are on your site. Some uh, themes are going to use the PHP w list, uh, WP list pages, but this one is just the categories. So for example, if we wanted to remove those, what I could do, I can just go in and in between this UL, I'm going to go and pull that code, for example. Right now I'm going to cut it because I don't want to get rid of it completely, and I'll put it back in a minute. So I'm going to save that, and I'll go back to my site, and I'll refresh it. Pull that header out of X, 
but allowed to be used still in YMT? Is there a way to do that in any environment? Uh, there probably is. Um, not an easy way to do it that I know of. Um, you possibly could duplicate the theme, right? And then tell blog X that it's only to use that theme and the other ones use the original theme. Okay. That, that's what I was thinking. Uh, but, uh, there's probably many ways to do it. Uh, that would be my first initial thought would be to duplicate it and then specifically tell blog X to use modified theme and then Y and Z use original theme. Uh, are there any other questions so far about anything? Yes. Yeah. A common problem is that you need to buy it. A common issue is you purchase a theme and then the logo you can use that you can use a significantly smaller than your customer's potential logo. Yes. You need to deal with that. Yes. Can you comment on that or show us? Sure, sure. Uh, the question was you buy a theme or you get a theme, uh, not necessarily buy a theme. And the logo that's in the theme is smaller than what uh, you want to put in or what your client wants to put in. Is that correct? Uh, and how to deal with that. So say, let's look at this logo. I'm going to use my cool little tool again. And it's going to tell me that the logo is, uh, has a width of 307 pixels, a height of 76. Most of the time, you can adjust that without running into a lot of problems. Um, for example, let's say, uh, let me look at this again. And it's going to be, it's the, the class that has this logo. Okay, and so now I'm going to go down here to the style sheet, and I'm going to look for logo, and I have it right here. There, there's several different faults to logo, so the first one you find may not, may not, not always be the one you want to work with, because uh, for example, right here I've got the logo, it tells me to float it left, but it doesn't tell me anything about uh, size. So if I look down a little further, I'm guessing I won't find anything. Uh, And that's all it's going to find for the logo. That's fine. So what I can do at this point, if I want, I can tell it that I want to, it's going to stretch it and make it look stupid, but I can tell it that I want to give it a width of maybe uh, 400 pixels. And uh, maybe a height of uh, 200 pixels. Okay. okay, so there is our new logo. It looks bad, but say that's the size that you wanted, right? But now it is uh, sitting on top of our, our featured area, which we don't want. So what I can do at that point, uh, image logo, but left, I can tell it, uh, let's look again at the logo. It's also, if you, if you look here, I've got the logo, but if you look under here, it, says, it tells you about the ancestors, and it says basically what other styles it's associated with. So it's also associated with the header style. So if I look up at the header, I'm going to see that I've got uh, a little bit of padding. And if we look at the padding, the first number, if, if, it's, if it's got four sets of uh, numbers, those are top, bottom, left, to right. If it just uses one set, like say it just said padding 30 pixels, that's it. That means it's going to put 30 pixels padding around the whole thing on all sides. If it's got the four numbers, that's top, bottom, left, to right. So I know that it's going to put 30 pixels of padding on the top of that head. So if I take that out, that's going to bump our logo up a little bit higher. Okay, it's going to bump everything up a little bit higher. But what I can do on the logo is I can tell it that I want to give it some padding. And again, this may not work the first time. Let's see how it goes. Uh, that put padding around the whole thing, which I don't want. So I'm going to use padding dash top, and that's going to tell it just put padding on the top. But at this point, that's not working how I want it to. So I'm probably going to go back and use margin. And that's... Uh, height. Your height of your header. Let's do a minus 30. So it's back. Okay. Yeah. And then... Yeah. 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 Folks, folks back here are claiming header height. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that answers your question? Yes. Good. Okay. So now I'm going to close this out, and all the changes that are made are going to go back, and everything should go back to normal. Uh, but anyway, a very easy way to, to, to edit your site, get a look at it before you actually make it live. Uh, these tools are great. Um, let's say we want to, and this is going to kind of be redundant, I think, but uh, well, now I've got my menu, so I don't know where I'm Let's change themes. Let's use everyone's favorite theme called Kubrick. We have a question? Yes. About Kubrick? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I wanted to know, if you save file in Firefox, does it then save um, on your RTP and then you can put it live? The, if, if I were to save, let's say, uh, you're talking about this file? Yeah. Right, say I make a change here and I click save. It's going to ask me where I want to save it, okay? So I say I'll save it to the desktop, okay? So now at this point I've got that file on the desktop. Sure. And then at that point if I want to, I have this file sheet right here. If I want to upload that to the FTP, then I make it change to upload it to the So it doesn't, always, it doesn't save it to the FTP, it saves it locally, and then you can upload it. Okay, so here's Kubrick, um, and here's our really cool Commodore 64 again. And say we want to, uh, for example, the, the Hello World, okay? The title, uh, I don't like where it's at. So I need to find out what that is. So I'm going to use my tool. Uh, it's going to tell me it's an H2. Okay. So I'm going to go look in my style sheet. I'm going to find H2 and see what I can do with it. There's several different calls to the H2 in this theme, I believe. Um, this one is, is, is telling us H1, H2, and H3. We want it to be a certain type of font, and we want it to be bold. That's not the one I want to edit. So I'm going to go look again. And that's actually all that's there. So I can either make a change to this, which is going to make a change to H1, H2, H3, or I can add a new style. Uh, nobody says you can't add a new one. Just because the style sheet is the way it is doesn't mean it has to stay there. Um, so say I want to put in H2 and open bracket, close bracket, and I'm going to tell it to float right. So now the H2 floats right. Uh, but that's not affecting the H1 and the H3. If I want to affect everything, which I probably wouldn't in this case, but you can, and I can go in here and add a new style, and I can tell it, uh, say maybe I wanted to uh, have, uh, I don't know, maybe I want a border of three pixels uh, dashed, and I want it to be pretty dark. So now all the H1s, all the H2s, and all the H3s have that border around them. Uh, but again, say I don't want that, I can take that out. I can put in my new H2 style that I made a minute ago. And uh, I can put in the, the border, and that's just going to do it for the H2s. So you see the sidebar widget is using an H2 also. That's H2 widget title. Okay, so I can again add a new style if I want to. I can do h 2title which there may already be one, I'm not sure it didn't work. And I can say border is none of that. If it doesn't work, that means, excuse me? Well, that might help. Uh, but again, it's not going to change because that widget title style is already somewhere else in the style sheet, so it's not going to listen to that. At that point, if I want to put it important, that might tell it to do something different, it might not. And it's not going to, because that style already exists. So I'll have to go find that in the style sheet and, and change it that way. But again, it's just, this is all, I mean, you're probably not going to put this border around your titles, and, and you probably don't care about doing so. But it's just basically to show you it's not rocket science, it's not super hard. It's. Okay, if you see something that's very cool, if you see something that's very cool, Site. Uh, can you use this to go in and uh, and bar that code and then upload it into your own site? And is that under open source? Is that uh, legit? Yes, you can. Um, depending on how much. The question was, if I see something really cool on another site, can I use these tools to go basically borrow uh, the stuff that they've done? You can. It does allow you to do that. Um, 
depending on how much you want to borrow and how much you want to do, there could be issues um, with uh, copyrights, depending on what side you're looking at, or just moral issues. Uh, are you going to be able to sleep at night? You know, I don't know. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't know. But yeah, let's let's do that. Let's look at uh, let's look at a really cool site. Uh, five minutes, okay. So I'm Shane, and uh, I'm from Nine Seeds. We do uh, custom development, mainly for WordPress. Um, other things also if need be. So say here's, I find a cool site, Nine Seeds. Wow, that's the most awesome site I've ever seen. I want to uh, copy something, which may be uh, I don't know, this guy right here. That's a really cool black bar with really cool white letters, and I want that really bad, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to look, and that tells me that it is the P tag inside uh, services home, it looks like. Um, yeah, so let's look at the style sheet. Is that where it lives? for services only. P. Okay, so we have services home P. It tells me it has a width. It has a font size. Text is aligned in the center. I have a background color of black, font color of white, and I've got padding and pixels. So theoretically, I could take this style, copy it into my style sheet, and as long as in my template I had uh, whatever I wanted to do, I named it the same as this, or I could change the name. Either. But I could grab that, put it in my style sheet, and have that same feature on my side if I wanted to. Um, for small things like that, I think it's okay. Uh, I don't condone, you know, pulling entire style sheets and entire stuff from sites to, to copy it. That's not cool. But uh, for small things, like you said, it, or even. Again, the way I learned was looking at other people's sites, looking at other people's source, and see how it worked. Did I go and take everything from them and make my own site? No, but it did teach me a lot. So, so you definitely can learn from other people's sites. If nothing else, just to look and see how it's done. Um, and, and there's a whole lot more that we didn't get into as far as background images through CSS and things like that. And I've got a lot of uh, resources uh, on a page I'll give you a link to here in a minute to take a look at that we didn't have time to get into. But I've got like uh, probably three minutes left, I don't know, uh, two minutes. Are there any questions? They have to be fast questions. And yep. yes. Here's the mic. What's the name of, what's the name of the uh, Firefox plugin again? It's just the, I've, I've got that on the page I'm going to give you, but it's just, if you'll go to Google and type in web developer uh, add-on. Uh, let's see, we'll go here real quick. Uh, the web developer and it's going to be the first result you get. And it's going to give you a link to download it in Firefox. Are there any other questions? And then what? How do you get it after? On Firefox? Oh, right. You're going to, yeah. You, you install it on Firefox. So once you're on the site, um, you can go. It's going, to, it's going to automatically give you a toolbar, which I don't like. But if we activate the web developer toolbar, I've got all these things on here. Like for the CSS, for example, if I want to view the CSS, it tells me Command Shift C. So I do uh, command shift, uh, that's not what I want, command shift E to add. Okay, that's going to get that. So it gives you a toolbar, but there are also uh, keyboard shortcuts to do that. Anything else? Yes? Uh, this, uh, you know, maybe more than you have time for, but I often find plugins that have the functionality that I want, but they put them in the wrong place. Right. But they're, they're for a widgeted sidebar, and I want to put it in the hard code, or Right. for the hard code and I want to put it, you know, use a short code to put it within a post. And are there simple ways to take a plugin and put it in the place you want it? You can. I mean, if you look at the plugin files, they're going to look very, well, they're going to look similar to your theme files. Not exactly because they're not a plugin, they're a theme and not a plugin. But you can take that and, and rearrange it how you want. But again, make backups, make backups, make backups. Uh, I can't count how many times I've uh, screwed things up and not made a backup. But you can take that plugin file and look at it the same way you look at a theme file and see where it's plugging it into your theme or see where it's plugging it into your post. And you can make those adjustments. Uh, you can make small adjustments with CSS with padding and margins and things like that. Um, the bigger adjustments, you actually want to change the PHP because you don't want like a you know a margin of minus 6,000 on whatever because every browser is going to just 
completely screw that up. So, but you can definitely get into the plugin files and move them around. It's just kind of a trial and error, though. It's because uh, every plugin is different and they do different things. They they put things in different places, but it's definitely possible. It's just make backups and uh, good luck. <laughs> cool. You want to add that? Oh yeah, I've got one more slide. It's really cool. Yeah. It's not even a slide. This is old school HTML. Thank you. Uh, you can go to shanesanderson.com slash boston uh, to get links to all the things that I've talked about and resources to things that I didn't get time to talk about. Again, I develop at Nine Seeds. I blog, I tweet, email me. Um, and that's all. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Shane. And